Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're talking about is using sensitive variables in Power Automate Desktop. This was a feature that was part of the October 2021 release. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. Now, in episode 71, I did talk about sensitive text in Power Automate Desktop, but there's been some changes uh, with this latest release of Power Automate Desktop itself. So previously, only sensitive text could be defined as an input and used in designated fields such as the Excel password field. Now this has now changed. We have uh, the ability to use or protect sensitive text in many different areas and you're going to see that throughout the demo in a little bit here. So what's important about sensitive variables is that we don't want to leak the contents into logs and by logs I mean run history. So we don't want to see that either from a Cloudflow perspective or a desktop flow perspective. So now what we can actually go ahead and do is go ahead and click on the icon that you see here as a way to be able to uh, indicate that a variable is sensitive and we can toggle it on or off but naturally when it is on and we have an execution we won't see that information reach our logs either. Now there are some limitations around hard coding values directly in your desktop flow. So if you designate a variable as sensitive and then you hard code some value in it, you still see it as the input. But um, as I talk a little bit later, I feel like that's a little bit of an anti-pattern. That's not something you should probably be doing anyways. And you should be always retrieving your secure, your secrets, your, your sensitive information from secure sources such as Key Vault or CyberArk instead of hard coding it. Uh, so that way you can ensure that it's protected end to end. And then naturally from a Cloudflow perspective, you do want to use the secure inputs, secure outputs feature, just so that you've got end to end all of your sensitive information being obfuscated and not included inside of your logs. So yeah, let's, let's dig a little bit deeper here. So let's talk a little bit about the old experience. So prior to the October 2021 release, Whenever we went to go ahead and, and to create an input, we had this ability to select a data type. And there was essentially two options, like a string and a sensitive text. Now, when we chose sensitive text, what this would do is it would protect the value that was coming in from our logs. And so we wouldn't see any leakage from that perspective. The challenge was, was that we could only use this field in designated uh, sorry, we could only use this value in designated fields. So for example, in my prior video, I had used it in the Excel password field uh, where I could go ahead and pass that in securely and, you know, to avoid any leakage of, of sensitive data. Now that posed a little bit of a problem because we couldn't use it in other places or other actions when there wasn't one of these designated password fields. So I couldn't just go ahead and use that data, say in a web app, and you know not have it show up in the logs. And so this is where the improvement, the enhancement is coming from, is that this is now gone, that, that dropdown will just only be text now. But what we will see is this toggle, where we can go ahead and toggle and mark an input or an output as sensitive. And so the data type now will only be string, but we can go ahead and manage it this way. Now, when we go ahead and use this value throughout our script, it will be obfuscated, right? So it's not going to show up in the logs. And even, you know, we'll see here in the demo, uh, in the editor itself, like Power Automate Desktop, that we can toggle this value on through a, a specific icon, the icon I showed in the, the previous slide. So that is what's new from that perspective. So let's go ahead, let's run a demo. And uh, we'll go ahead and see this in action. Okay, so let's jump into a demo. And one thing I did want to mention is oftentimes when we think about sensitive text, our mind automatically goes to like passwords. And uh, absolutely, that is an example of sensitive text. But it's also a reminder that it, it can be more than that. And that's kind of what I want to focus on here. Uh, you can have other examples of sensitive information, such as like personal identifiable information. Like if you were processing... Uh, you know, some some sort of uh, like, you know, document or input that included, say, customer information, or perhaps you're in a government agency and you've got something about citizens. 
that would be examples of, of information you'd also want to protect, that you would also want to exclude from your logs. Uh, could be related to GDPR as another example. Then on top of it, it could also be financial information where you just have you know, important information that you don't want to have leaked out into your logs and, and have people that uh, aren't you know, qualified or allowed to see that information you know, accidentally run into it. And so we're going to focus on more of that scenario here where, you know, I have a, a fictitious, you know, pro profit and losses spreadsheet, obviously super simplistic, but it, it does explain sort of what we're doing here. Now, uh, financials can also be sensitive and uh, you people are generally on a need to know basis. And so as part of, uh, you know, a monthly sort of email that maybe goes out to some sort of senior leader or executives, you know, get, updating them on sort of the current, uh, you know, financial situation, you don't want that information showing up in your logs. And so that's what we want to do here is we just have a spreadsheet where we're calculating sort of the monthly profit or loss. And we want to pass in an input uh, into the spreadsheet, find a specific record, and then be able to extract the value and to be able to do that in a secure manner where we don't have it leaked into our logs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide an input of Fabricam and then I hope to go ahead and extract, you know, the $20,000. So in Power Automate Desktop, uh, how I would go ahead and model this is that I'm going to go ahead and create some a sensitive input and a sensitive output. Now the input is going to be the name of the company that I want to look up. The output is going to be the value that is extracted. So in our example, we'll pass in Fabricam and then we're going to extract the $20,000. Now here we see that logo or that image that I've talked about before. And we can go ahead and toggle these values on and off. And naturally, when we're editing and working with this debugging, uh, we can choose whether or not we want to include this information. Now, for the purpose of this demo, we want to talk about protecting it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to enable sensitive inputs. Now, the Excel data variable is kind of interesting here. What we're going to do is we're going to launch Excel. We're then going to go ahead and find a specific cell that contains our input, so Fabricam. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is read the column beside the column where we find Fabricam, and we're gonna extract this information and store it into a variable called Excel data. Now, this is the default naming convention for uh, that, that uh, result set. We naturally could go change it if we wanted, but I'm gonna just, uh, for now, just leave it as the default. What'll happen is this flow variable is going to go ahead and gets created for me. And I can then go ahead and turn that output into a sensitive value as well. Now I could do that for like these other ones, but these aren't really sensitive. So that's kind of overkill to go ahead and do that. But this will allow me to, you know, be able to protect this data as well. Uh, once we've retrieved that piece of data, we're going to close Excel and then we're going to set our output data to our Excel data. So this is important to note that when you do use protected or sensitive data in expressions or do any sort of assignment, the sensitivity will carry on with it so that you don't accidentally expose data. Now, the one area where I would call it out, and this is called out in the documentation, where it's, uh, I would call it a known limitation from that perspective. And that's where you hard code values. And so this is one of those things where you could probably argue that this is an anti-pattern where why would I want to go ahead and assign my secret password directly in, in my script like, like this, right? Like that wouldn't be something that you want to go ahead and, and do. So naturally I can go ahead and set the sensitivity to, uh, for this. If I go over here, this is new var, right? I can go ahead and protect it. Now, when I go and run this, we're going to see my secret password passed in to the variable as unprotected, but the output would subsequently be protected. But as I mentioned before, that this isn't a good practice regardless. You should always be extracting this from a secure source itself. For now, there's, there's really two options. One would be Azure Key Vault, and then the other would be CyberArk. Now, uh, there's probably others as well, but those would be the, the top two that come to mind. So do be aware of this, but I would consider this to be a bad practice if you're including sensitive information directly in your script. So let's go ahead. Let's just delete this. Uh, we'll save our script. 
everything's currently set to sensitive. And now what we'll do is we're going to uh, pivot over to our Cloudflow and see how we can secure this end to end. Okay, so now I'm up in my Cloudflow. And in the previous video, I talked about this as well. It, it's a feature called Secure Inputs, Secure Outputs. And that's why you see this lock on these specific actions because you do want to include this to make sure that end to end you don't have any sort of leakage itself. Like um, exposing it up in your cloud flow and protecting it in your desktop flow solves half the problem, but we can have a complete solution by using this feature. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just prompt for the name of the company that I wanna look for. And this is where I've gone ahead and set secure inputs and secure outputs. So whatever is inputted into here, whatever is extracted out of here will be covered from that perspective. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass in this uh, value company over to my desktop flow. And uh, so that'll be passed as an input. Now, I've also included it here, uh, the secure inputs and secure outputs. Uh, if I didn't enable secure inputs, that would still happen. But naturally, I want to also secure the outputs because I'm gonna get the value back for that from that spreadsheet. And I want that output to be protected from that perspective. Now. On the send an email, I don't need to go ahead and uh, you know enable secure inputs, secure outputs because these values are already protected and we can see that here through the lock. So let's go ahead and let's run this. And uh, now we need to, to provide a prompt and we can go ahead and click run flow. And what this will do is this will run our Excel spreadsheet process, go ahead look for the value in that spreadsheet and then return the corresponding you know, profit for that specific company. Okay, so we can see that that's now gone ahead and run. Uh, we can go ahead and see the email, right? So the email was sent successfully. We had our Fabricam and $20,000. Uh, those were our secure uh, inputs and outputs that we had defined. And if we go ahead and take a look at our logs, right? Content is not shown due to security configuration. And uh, same thing, right? Content's not shown. So this is nothing new. This is our Cloudflow Secure Inputs, Secure Outputs feature. Now, what we do want to be able to go ahead and, and check out though is on our logs for our desktop flow. So let's go ahead and find our, our desktop flow. So I've gone ahead, I've browsed to desktop flows and I found my specific instance. You can see a minute ago that we had a run history uh, record that was created for us. Now, if we go ahead and uh, look at say launch Excel and we check our inputs, we won't find any values here that are, are sensitive. And if we check our outputs, uh, so yeah, we didn't pass anything in. So that's uh, not over, overly relevant, but let's go ahead and check out find and replace. So here the text to find, that was uh, that sensitive input. So we can see that it is, it is protected for us. Now the next one is around like reading from the Excel spreadsheet. So on the input side, we're just passing in some columns and a row, so that's not overly concerning, but the output is gonna be interesting for us, right? It was that value, and once again, sensitive value from, from that perspective. The rest of it's not overly interesting. We're gonna close Excel, and uh, we'll set the variable. This, I guess, is interesting. Uh, here we've got sensitive value, and then the output is sensitive value. And so once again, showing end to end how we can go ahead and protect sensitive information, whether that be secrets, API keys, passwords, but also in this case, financial data. We can go ahead and protect financial data as well. All right, so that concludes this video for this week. Uh, thanks for checking it out. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead, find me at Weirzy. Uh, you're obviously on the YouTube channel. Thanks for checking it out. Please go ahead, like, subscribe, add comments as well. Uh, take care and we'll see you again next week. Later.